All right, Scott, in today's video, I am going to show you how we use the use form hook from Inertia inside of our apps in a production app. All right, so let's have a quick look at what that looks like. So we are working on Clipflow, which I talk about quite a lot, but today I wanted to show you how we're using forms and I, it's I probably it's quite a different pattern to what you've usually seen in Inertia. And I've been doing this for a long time and some people might hate it, but I'm gonna just show you how we do it. So first is the standard way. So when you scaffold an Inertia project in with Inertia Rails, you get end up in, with these form objects. If we have a look here, you can see we're importing use form from Inertia React. We've got the use form hook. And then from here we have the use form and we're passing in the type of the of the form and then we're passing in the parameters and this sets the default params all right so this is what the form's going to start with and then we get a payload out of that which is the data set data errors and processing and then we also have an on submit function that's coming through here this is a custom code here so you can see the form handle submit and then when we're handling inputs we pass in the data and we're getting data.title and then we're setting the data title with the target value. So very standard kind of like form. You'd see this in most forms like that, how they work. Now, what I found with this is, see, this is a form, basically a layout of a form. But in real apps, you don't generally just want to have a CRUD app with a form. Like for, for instance, this is a form here. So when you click this, it changes the priority of this thing, right? So if we click that, it's doing a submit request to a form and changing that. You could have a form in a new like this. So you could have a title, a description, and then you have the fields set here. You could have a standard form where you're running something like this. I don't really use the form component style because I feel like it just changes too much. So what does that mean? That means that we then lean on this guy. Right, so this is just using the hook wherever we need to do the form. What I found with that is we end up having to reproduce a lot of logic, constantly passing in the types, constantly, you know, getting all this data out. Our handle submit functions always need to be rewritten. It kind of gets a bit messy, I think, when you want to use that form across multiple places. With all that being said, I'm going to show you how we actually do it inside of Clipflow. So this is a production app that's running. So sometimes it's nice to actually see how the things run in the real world. The way I like to structure, especially because we're talking inertia rails here, I like to follow a naming convention, which is basically use model. For instance, use channel which would be a channel model. So it corresponds to that. Or use idea, which is an idea model. Use media file, etc. One of the ones that we're working on at the moment is probably the organization. So what you can see here is we've got this thing, use organization hook, right? So we export that hook as the default. And then from there, we, as you can see it here, we export default and then we export the type, which is the payload. And that basically just tells us what's coming out of there. But what you can see here, I've added this only params keys. So sometimes you want to use a form with every property. You want to submit like a CRUD form. Sometimes you want to do a form that only has one or two attributes. So for instance, if we're looking at our projects view, make sure that I'm in development. So we jump into our projects view. And here we only have two things we want to be able to change, the priority and the scheduled app. So I would pass those as keys. If we just do a quick search for only param keys, I'm using the use organization and I only want to use the organization type. So what I do there is I filter those, the default form params, which could be when we pass in the entire organization, it's gonna spread it into here. And then we're gonna filter by those keys. So these end up being only a partial of that organization. So it could just be that one field. So that may, means when we make the submit, so if we have a look in here, I'm just gonna grab this network inspector. If we change this priority to low, if we see the put method and you can see the payload and we've only sending through the ID, the priority and the scheduled date. Just keeps the form lightweight, means you don't make any mistakes if you're accidentally overriding a param that you may not. Just for me, it's a bit of peace of mind. We grab that, we then initialize our form. Now, a key thing here with inertia to know, or this hook, it initializes, this is the default value, right? So if this organization changes on load or something, or the object changes elsewhere and you, that you pass in, this doesn't change. The form payload will not change. Very important because it's a gotcha. Right. I really wish they had a, a depths array here, but one method you can do that is wherever you use this component, you can pass in the key. So something that people don't really 
think about much. It's where you can have the key, right? So this key here, if you change that key, it will reset that component and recompute. So if you do have some in, in variables that change, like in the, this thing, just make sure you, re, you change the key and happy days. So that's a gotcha there with this form hook. From there, we have the data and the transform. So we use the transform to change the shape of the data. So with Rails, we use safe parameters. So from here, we're gonna transform data and we're gonna set the organization object, which then matches. Here, if we go into our controllers, and the reason why I map everything with the naming convention is that it's very easy to find everything. So we go organizations. And then you can see here with our allowed params, we're looking for organization. So it's the organization object, uh, which you could also see in here. Oh, this is the project. You can see it's got the project wrapping the thing. So that's what we're doing with the transform. That's what that does there for us. I've also got inside here, I'm exporting a submit create form function, which takes in the event. So that could be a form event. And then it has a payload, which is the submit payload, which can have an on submit and on success. And then the visit options. I've added these so I can make callbacks if I want to do something with the form on the front end or anything special. I can catch it on the on submit and I can also catch it. And like this is I can override the whole on submit method. And I can also after success or on success, I have that at the end as well. So if I want to submit something, close a modal, I can do all that stuff, happy days. So submit, create form, right? Prevents default, has that callback, transforms the data. I add the redirect there. So for inertia, we always want to be re redirecting. So we perform an action and then redirect back to where we want to be. And inertia will go and fetch the JSON required. And then I call the create organization function, right? So that lives up here. And again, I'm passing in the callbacks in the form and really it's just the post and reset. So I'm posting to this endpoint, which is the V3 organizations. So I did a video on how to do this. This is really cool. We get the typed routes and then on success if i have the callback i will call it and then i'll just reset the form okay so very simple but you can see here with the update i also have the only param so i only want to refresh the explorer the flash message and the organization so that we're just fetching that little bit of data super fast and the delete we just refresh the organizations because that would be in a list from there those are the submit so i create submit create form submit update form and then for like things like delete and stuff i just generally will create another function which isn't the full submit form because it's not it's really just a button click usually and i'll just pass in delete organization now these are all exported from this hook right so we can then use our forms let's look for use organization where we're actually using it so we import the use organization we pass in the organization that we have so it can get all the fields out of it and then we have our param key so only the organization type and then here's my payload right so i'm getting the callbacks to submit the update form i get the data the organization type if the form's dirty and the set data and then what i do here is use a use effect now look i don't know if this is the best way to do these things but what we watch for is if the form's dirty and if this value changes we submit the update form so you can see that happening here in the organizations uh, let's go into ken's team and i'll just jump into the new inertia version and it's basically just this guy here right so when you click that it sends it and refreshes and you can see our, our explorer changed here because it's a different type depending on the type and what you can see also is inside here in the network the payload and the headers would say partial data explorer flash organization and then inside here with the edit you can see we're getting our new props which is the explorer flash and organization so we're only loading those props so it makes it as fast as possible keeps the system load down and happy days so that's there and then yeah we literally just from there when you click on select an item we're just setting the data and setting the value and that's it and that's how we're doing forms with inertia inside of uh, rails and it actually seems to be working really well and i like this way of like containing all the data for the one model inside of the one file there's only one place to ever come and check so if you change an endpoint or anything like that you don't have to go around because with the, the other method, like you could have that form component, which is great if you're doing like a CRUD app, but like, let's be honest, if you want to do something a bit more high fidelity, better UX, you know, with drop downs, with things like that, you can't really do that because then you're going to have all these weird things or you have to create multiple forms. So I just like to use, create a hook around the hook and that's, that's the way to go. Uh, and for us, and I found this works really well, right? So it's, it's a nice way to use the inertia form. The only thing that I wish it had was that depth. 
but you can get around it. Other than that, it's been very solid. It does return processing, and then we do some validation. So inside of our, the only other thing that I can think of with terms of forms is like, if the form is valid and you could use something like, I guess you could use, would it be Zod or something like that where you can define the structure on, on what something needs to look like and then see if it's valid. You could use one of those libraries, especially because we're using TypeScript and everything is typed. But usually, so if we go into components, we look at modals and then we have a look at like the most recent one is the new channel one. I usually just do this in line and you could probably do this somewhere else, but I just usually do an is form valid and I check that it's not processing, it has a title and it has a platform ID and then it's valid. And I just catch that here. I use the same submit function because we also have hotkeys. So we just trigger this function here. And this can be unique to the modal, right? Because the modal has like, if there's create more, leave it open, do all this kind of stuff. And here you can see I'm using that on success callback that I just spoke about earlier. We're passing that through to the submit create form. See, that comes out of there. I'm pulling it out here to a submit function because I want to do a little bit of different logic. If create more enabled is not on, close the modal. Otherwise, set the URL to nothing and focus on the title again. So you can create another one. Basically, just keep looping through. We have our hotkeys here. So if you do meta enter, it submits the form only if the form is valid, right? That's a good one to use. Make sure you use that. Otherwise, it triggers everywhere. And I mean, it's that simple, right? And then we've got our form component and we have each item just with the basic stuff. This URL special, it's not part of the form, it's just a special thing that we do for lookup, but here these are all part of the form, okay? And then down the bottom, we literally, it's just a submit function that triggers the form. And away you go. So that's it. It's very, it's a very powerful, I think it's a very powerful way of doing it and it keeps everything modular and contained. And then from there, you just have a great time. So I haven't found any real issues and we're, we're doing, like I said, a whole bunch of different forms across a whole bunch of different pages. Everywhere is slightly different, but you get to use that same logic once. You don't have to constantly redefine everything. I've closed that window, but if I open that one up again, you can see here, this is handling the submit and they've actually delegated that out to here. So their form would be structured in a certain way and then you'd be doing your on submit here every single time. So you'd be transforming there so if i now went into the new so you're doing the same this is for me is repetitiveness right you got to transform those are identical you got this is a patch versus a post for me it's a create versus an update so i would just build those functions once and then the path is done and they're also hard coding the path here which i don't love because if you change the route you're going to be jumping through every single place where you use this especially if your forms are different there's two ways to do that this is the way we do it and it seems to be working fine for now. I'm sure that in the future, I'll, I'll find all the mistakes. But until then, if you want to check out Clipflow, if you make content as well yourself, please check it out. We're just finishing up our alpha. So we are closing that. That is closed. But if you reach out to me or sign up, we, you can sneak yourself in there. Also, if you want to come work with us, work on Rails and you want to work on some inertia and you've been, you know, you like, you know, React, you know, Rails and you wanna build a product that's gonna scale to the moon, reach out as well, because we're always looking for good people. So until next time, catch on the next one.